Hey, it's Steve. Today is day 19 of my 30 days of video series and also water fasting at the same time. Um, in terms of the water fasting, well, Rochelle is back in town now and we haven't seen each other's, you know, before March, 30, March 20th. So that's been quite a while. And so I had my first experience of fasting sex last night. And that was kind of um, interesting because last year I hadn't had sex at all during my fast. And, you know, this is like the first time I've, I've done that and uh, during a fast. And, you know, I, I know I was kind of paying attention to the differences and it, it was pleasurable. Um, but it was, you know, I was noticing just my physical energy was a lot lower. Um, and, and I'd say the main difference I noticed is, and this is kind of true for the rest of the fast as well, is that my body seems to like just conserve energy while I'm fasting, including emotional energy. So it's hard to get as excited um, about anything. So it's like, it feels pleasurable, but the, but the experience is just not as intense for me. And it's kind of like the same thing each day. I notice there's this background calmness with, um, with water fasting, and it's great for work and for productivity. It's not the best for sex though, because like maybe you wanna get more enthusiastic and passionate about it. And it's like my body just keeps wanting to go back to this equilibrium of being calm. <laughs> Um, again, that's like perfect for productivity working at my desk because I don't get too excited. I don't get down. You know, I'm just like at this really even stable level of, of mental energy. It's like my emotions are just kind of toned down a lot. So it's, it's almost feels like you're just working like an Android, <laughs> um, for a bit, which can be great if you want to get through certain types of work. Like this week I've been working on some accounting work and that's been, um, you know, just good for that so far. Uh, cause it's like, I normally hate accounting work. But I've noticed, like, as I'm doing it now, it's just like none of that negative emotion towards it or resistance is there. It's just like, okay, what's the next task? Let's do it. What's the next task after that? Let's do it. And it's just kind of going through really, you know, easily. Um, so it's like, you know, that emotional resistance or that emotional excitement and passion is just really toned down. And, and that really shows up sexually. So, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to, like, being done with the fast. <laughs> um, because I think the, the ex experience of having sex will be better during that time. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of balancing out with having really nice work productivity. Speaking of accounting, by the way, um, I don't know about you, but, but like for, you know, business accounting, I've been using QuickBooks for years. And I absolutely hate QuickBooks with a passion. <laughs> um, like just, in my opinion, Intuit is just such a nasty terrible, awful company. The way they screw their users over so much with updates that, you know, make previous versions obsolete. Like I was previously using QuickBooks 2014 on the Mac and then it updates, you know, it updates and like it stops working completely, couldn't even open it anymore um, because it, you know, went incompatible with like the latest Mac, Macintosh um, operating system update. And so it's, and then the company's just like, well, abandon that, we're on the next version now. Um, God, if you read some of the reviews online about QuickBooks, it's just like terrible trashing of the company behind it. I just don't know how anybody who works for Intuit could have any self-respect given how they treat their customers. Um, but, uh, so, well, so for years I've been looking for a better solution and I found one that I'm really happy with. Um, I'm not an affiliate or anything, so I'm not doing this like for marketing reasons. Just for anybody else who's like was in my shoes and just absolutely hates QuickBooks with a, with a passion, but you've been using it for years because it's like the industry standard. Um, I found this other online service that does accounting called Xero, X-E-R-O dot com. And I just started using them yesterday. Uh, and they have a, they have a free 30-day trial account. But uh, when I was looking at their features, it was like so awesome <laughs> uh, compared to QuickBooks. It just It looked really good. And they have a really nice modern website. And they have a cell phone app too. And um, they can import things. And it has all these features that QuickBooks lacks. I mean, QuickBooks looks like software that's stuck in the 90s. And I would say that's kind of generous, maybe like early 90s. Um, and when I started using Zero today, it was like, I got these accounts updated, you know, so quickly. Like tasks that would have take, taken me, um, you know, an hour in QuickBooks in like Zero, it's like five or 10 minutes. Uh, just because of the, just, how, just because of how modern the interface is and how fast it is to do things and how smart it, it's designed. Uh, it just doesn't have that archaic design that gives me headaches. So that I really love. Um, QuickBooks Online, I know some people use, but I think that's a bit of a joke <laughs> uh, compared to zero. So if you're 
if you're you know running a small business or anything and thinking of starting one, I would definitely check out Zero. I've only been using it since yesterday, so I can't give it a huge thumbs up. But but compared to QuickBooks, it really is not a high bar to give something a huge thumbs up over that like swamp like standard. So um, yeah, uh, you know, I would I would highly recommend checking it out. I think it's like. There's a basic version that's pretty cheap. It's there's you know they have a discount code right now on their website that's like twenty one dollars a month or something. Um, so it is a bit more expensive than than QuickBooks to you know to buy the software. Um, I'm not sure what the QuickBooks online pricing is, but it's like twenty one dollars a month for the first six months and then thirty dollars a month after that. So uh, yeah, definitely you know check it out if you've been looking for an alternative to QuickBooks. So on. To, um, um, another one other thing I'll mention, which is um, Conscious Growth Club. We just opened that up four days ago for early access. The people who want like early access to it before the program's even de fully developed yet. Um, so mainly you get access to the forums that time. And I'm happy to say we're already up to 45 members. So that's really awesome. 47 if you count me and Rochelle. Um, so that's been you know really quick growth over just the first four days. I'm delighted to see that. <laughs> uh, so I was hoping to get maybe like you know few dozen members for the early access and, and like 45 I'm like delighted for that because that gives us a great group to keep developing it um, and to you know build up towards the full launch which I expect will happen later this summer so that's been great and I thought it would be kind of a slow start but no it's like when these people got in the forums it's just like immediate activity ramping up right away and uh, I think we're up to about a thousand posts in the forums already just in four days so, you know, that's, and it's kind of increasing each day as more members sign up. So that's been awesome to see. Uh, there's, you know, there's people like just diving into their growth challenges and sharing their goals and things like that. So that's, it's really gratifying to see people taking um, advantage of this because I've been planning this for, in, in working on the back end for so many months. Um, it's nice to finally at least have this initial early access part opened up. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, and I have a really good, you know, energy on the fast still at this point, so that's been great for, you know, keeping up with the group and things like that. The main topic I want to talk about is the mental benefits of cardio exercise. Now, there's, you know, there's all kinds of, like, anti-cardio crap out there these days, and most of it is bunk. <laughs> um, the advantage of cardio um, in terms of, like, mental benefits is just so well established in the scientific literature. It's um, and it, it's not to say that there aren't benefits to other forms of exercise like weight training and yoga and things like that. One of the reasons cardio, though, has been studied so much is because many of these studies initiate with mice. So they start out studying mice and how they exercise and things like that and the effects on mice. And then that branches in, and gives um, inspiration to do human studies. It's very easy to get mice to do cardio exercise because you just put a mouse on a mouse wheel and they just go and go and go and they run. It's not so easy to get a mouse to do weight training or yoga. So because of that, yoga and weight training just haven't been studied nearly as much. So there may be many benefits, and I'm sure there are. I know there's you know benefits to doing yoga and, and weight training, but um, in terms of mental benefits, you know, I'm not talking about physical benefits. Like, it's obvious you do yoga, you become more flexible. It's obvious you do weight training, you become stronger physically. But, uh, and cardio has many benefits, too, of a physical nature. But, you know, in terms of the scientific literature, nothing, just nothing beats cardio in terms of the mental benefits, like how it benefits your brain. And I'll share some of those um, benefits with you, and so just so you can, you know, give this some more thought. And they're, they're really strong benefits. So if you don't do cardio at all, um, I would strongly recommend you pick up the habit if you want to have a sharper mind. So the brain is, you know, brain, the physical brain in your skull is only about 2% of your body weight. It weighs about 3 pounds in an adult. But it takes up 20% of your oxygen and nutrients. So it's a massive resource hog. Uh, and... Because it takes up, you know, so, so many oxygen and nutrients, it creates a lot of waste products. And one of the benefits of cardio is it, t it tends to act as a, a pump for the brain. It basically triggers a lot of cleanup mechanisms that rebalance things in the brain and get those waste products out of there. If you don't do cardio, 
your brain tends to build up a lot of waste products and gunk, and it just it makes your thinking sluggish, it makes your mind foggier, it makes you less disciplined, it makes it harder to concentrate, it can uh, reduce your memory, and, and so on. So I have a list here I wanted to share about um, some of the benefits of cardio, and these are all based on, on research. So uh, one of the benefits is it makes your brain more energy efficient. It, uh, doing cardio exercise helps your, um, your cells uptake glucose more efficiently, and the cells in your brain, your neurons, actually become stronger. So you end up with you know, stronger brain cells and hence a stronger, smarter brain. Uh, cardio exercise stimulates uh, neurogenesis, or the growth of new brain cells. It rebalances your hormones and neurotransmitters. This is a huge effect, I notice, is that sometimes you just feel, like, off when you don't do cardio exercise. I notice that, because uh, I'm, I'm, I've been a runner for, like, decades. <laughs> um, I started really getting into it in my early 20s. And, uh, you know, if I don't go running for a while, for a few days, I really feel it mentally. And then if I just go do some cardio exercise, 30, 45 minutes or so, it's like my mind is boom. It's like it's sharp again. Even after just one workout, usually about two, three workouts, I'm like back to normal and feeling like closer to peak. But even after one workout, I'm probably like 60, 70% of the way back to where I want to be mentally. So that's, you know, that's really important because your hormones and your neurotransmitters n naturally fall out of balance. You get too much of one hormone or neurotransmitter and too little of another. And that can affect your thinking. It causes your mind to go down a pathway that's kind of out of your control. Uh, you want to like sit down and work and you just feel lazy and you feel like watching TV. That kind of thing really diminishes greatly when you do some cardio exercise and then those neurotransmitters have a chance to rebalance. So it raises the levels of the ones that are too low and it lowers the levels of the ones that are too high. It's constantly pushing the reset button to put your brain back to an optimal state when you do that. Cardio, I mentioned this before, it removes waste products from the brain. It acts as like a pump. It's the garbage cleanup. It's the, it's the garbage cleaning mechanism. If you don't do that, you just get a buildup of, of you, know, you know, waste products in your brain. Um, it, uh, cardio exercise improves the executive functions in the, prefrontal, in the prefrontal cortex. This is your planning, your task switching, your self-discipline, your self-restraint. If, uh, you know, if you have issues with self-discipline, even though it does take some self-discipline to get into cardio, it's a really high leverage thing to do. So one of the best uses of the limited amount of self-discipline you may be able to muster is to get your ass to exercise. Um, and if you start doing that, you'll notice your self-discipline increases a lot across the board even when you're not exercising. That I definitely notice too. It's like, if I don't do cardio, I just become lazier and more sluggish across the board. Uh, cardio exercise improves motivation. It improves alertness. It improves attention span. It improves focus and concentration. It's a major mood booster, one of the best out there. In fact, it's at least as good as, as many of the antidepressants out there. Um, I, I remember reading some studies about how just, you know, taking people off antidepressants and giving them cardio exercise, they, they did even better. <laughs> um, and, uh, it, you know, it's good for reducing anxiety and stress and depression. Um, cardio exercise activates cellular repair mechanisms. So the brain cells that are slightly damaged, it says, oh, time to repair yourselves. It slows the mental aging process. So people who do a lot of cardio exercise, they live longer and they age more slowly. It boosts confidence. Uh, that's kind of an obvious benefit. If you've done cardio much at all, you know it makes you feel more confident. And a side benefit of that is when you feel more confident, you socialize more. And socializing more has other brain benefits too, so you get that compound effect. Uh, it uh, reduces cravings and addictions, like smoking and coffee. It, in, in fact, there, um, there was a study that showed that regular exercises smoked less, had less caffeine and alcohol, ate less junk food, curbed spending, and got angry less often. <laughs> so it improves your self-regulation abilities. It basically makes you more in control of yourself. It gives you a stronger memory, too. A, a 2012 study found that people who got little exercise had a greater atroph atrophy of the hippocampus. That's the part of your brain that stores memories. In other words, their memory centers weakened. They, they weren't as you know, clear on their memories. And uh, it also helps 
prevent um, and delay brain wasting diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's because it makes your cells stronger and more vibrant. Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, interestingly, they're essentially, at a fundamental level, the same disease. They're the death of too many brain cells. In Parkinson's, the death of these brain cells are occurring in the motor cortex, whereas in Alzheimer's, they're occurring in your memory centers. So, um, you know, if you have stronger cells, they're less likely to start dying off in mass and causing these, these problems. Or at the very least, they'll live longer, they'll last longer, and they'll delay the onset of these diseases if there's some other cause triggering it. Uh, women who exercise, um, car you know, do cardio while pregnant, and of course you want to be moderate about that and not overdo it, uh, they have healthier babies. And the interesting thing is, like, when you add up all these benefits, it, um, it's actually healthier and this is going to sound really extreme, but as far as I can tell, it's true. It's actually healthier to smoke cigarettes and exercise regularly than it is not to exercise and not smoke. So it's like, you know, if you're not exercising at all, you're worse off than a smoker <laughs> that's exercising. As bad as we know smoking is, not exercising is even worse. Uh, it's just absolutely terrible, awful for your brain. <laughs> so, you know, it's like people think of their mind often is a separate thing that's detached from their brain. But the more, you know, I've explored just like physical effects on the brain from like, from like various forms of detoxification and physical exercise and things like that, the more I really become aware of the connection between the mind and the brain and how they're, they're really, you know, one. Uh, so your mental experience of being in your mind is really strongly attached to the health of your brain. If you don't do cardio exercise, on a regular basis, you know, you're just screwing your brain over massively and you're gonna reduce so many good things in your life. Your motivation goes down, your focus goes down, your ability to concentrate you go down, goes down, your self-regulation ability goes down, your memory weakens, you'll, you'll feel less confident and be less social. I mean, that's, that's a crappy set of <laughs> downgrades to do just for you know, a simple habit um, that you can you know, do, do regularly. So, you know, the ideal, um, as far as, you know, what I've read, ideally you want to do about 45 minutes a day. I mean, if you live in the USA, don't go by government regulations because they're pure crap. <laughs> they're all watered down and, and junk, you know, so um, don't focus on what the government recommends. But, you know, in terms of the science, you're looking at, like, the more you do up to, like, about 45 minutes, the better. 45 to 60 minutes is a pretty good range. Beyond that the mental benefits don't really increase much, as far as I can tell. Uh, and then you might actually have some um, physical issues, too, if you overdo the exercise too much. Uh, you know, I mean, you can go for, like, distance running and things like that, but it, it becomes a little bit riskier, and the mental benefits just don't increase, uh, at least not significantly after that. So if, you, if you're doing it for the mental benefits, and that's why I do it. Um, I, you know, I've done a little weight training now and then. I've done some yoga now and then. But my priority is not to get super flexible or to have, you know, Schwarzenegger-like muscles or anything like that. I just, it's like, what does that do for my mind? I don't care. Um, but I want a sharp mind. Like, that is a critical priority for me. And that's the reason I exercise regularly. And, you know, it's kind of ironic I'm talking about while I'm fasting because I'm not doing that exercise during fasting because that would wear me down too much. I got winded on this fast just going up three flights of stairs. Uh, so I do, you know, walks uh, outside when I can, when I have the energy for it though. And I, but as soon as I'm done with the fast and I'm kind of transitioned back to regular food again, I will ramp up the exercise, um, as, you know, as soon as I can, cause that's just like key to get that mental benefit. Uh, it's, you know, ideally you want to aim for about 45 minutes of, of cardio and about four times a week. And cardio means that you're in, you know, like a certain target heart range. Uh, and a, a quick formula for doing that uh, that I learned years ago was to take 220 minus your age and then multiply that by 60 to 80%. And that's the range you want to be in. Personally, I find that too low because I'm 46 and 80% of that is 139 beats per minute. And when I'm doing 139, I feel like I'm dogging it. So um, usually I like to exercise cardio between 145 and 155. Sometimes, if I want to push myself, I'll go up into the 160s. 
if I hit like the 170s, that's not real sustainable for me. I'll start like really, you know, being a little oxygen depleted or I might get nauseous or something. Uh, but I can handle, you know, 160s sometimes. But for long, sustainable runs, like, you know, 45-minute run or so, I like to be in the, you know, usually in the upper 140s or lower 150s is, is pretty good. Uh, and also, it's really easy to track that if you have, like, some kind of heart rate monitor. I used to wear a, one of those chest straps with an associated um, wristwatch. Uh, but I like having the Apple Watch, uh, which just tells me, you know, what my heart rate is while I'm running. And it tells me my distance and calories and so on. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so I can just, like, glance at it whenever I'm running. If I feel like I'm going too slow, I'm like, oh, 135, let's pick up the pace, uh, that that sort of thing. In my neighborhood, um, I, I live kind of up in the hills on the west side of Vegas. So whenever I go running, I'm always pretty much running uphill or downhill. So every run I do now is, like, hill training, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of good for getting your heart rate up if you want to go up hills and things like that. It's best to, to do... Um, you know, like at least four days a week, you can do more than that. Um, I usually like to do it every day if I can. Occasionally I might take a day off, but when I'm at my best, I just go every day, like weekends included. It's also best to do it in the morning, um, like first thing in the morning. And that's just because people who exercise in the morning are much more likely to maintain the habit than people who exercise later in the day. But if your schedule doesn't allow for that, it's fine to do it later in the day. I don't like doing it in the evening so much because uh, cardio exercise raises your metabolism and then I go into the evening like, you know, with a higher metabolism and if, you know, typically I'll go to bed like around 10, 10 10.30 p.m. And so if I exercise like at 8 p.m. then my metabolism is still, still a bit high and then it's like I'll get, you know, a little too warm going to sleep or sweaty or just like I'm too, I'm too amped up. I like doing in the morning because then it's like after I come back, I exercise, have, have breakfast, not while fasting, of course, but normally, and then um, just get right in my work day. And now I've got this like amped up metabolism that's great for focus and concentration and energy to, to pour into work. Uh, you know, the key thing is really make make it something that works for you. So there's all different kinds of cardio exercise. You can do, you know, running and um, uh, biking and uh, you know, gym workouts with like elliptical machines. I used to do elliptical machines for many years. I have an elliptical machine in my house. Uh, I, I, I've done a lot of interval training on the elliptical machine, but I have a tendency to keep maxing out the machine because I've done like elliptical for so many years. It's like I'm up to the maximum setting and I'm like for my high end of the intervals and it's feels kind of inadequate. Like um, in order to do elliptical and have it like be a workout for me, I have to run, I have to do it with a weight vest on. I put on a 40 pound weight vest and you can buy those online or at a sporting goods store. Uh, I, le I learned about those weight vests, by the way, by, by reading the book, um, Living with a Seal. I don't recall the author's name, but it was about this, um, this guy in New York City who hires a Navy SEAL to come live with him or, or train him for 30 days and it just like these crazy intense workouts. And I think he was wearing a 60 pound weight vest um, and doing these like runs in the freezing cold and things like that and all this crazy exercise. And I thought that sounds kind of cool. I never tried a weight vest. And it was actually easier than I thought. I would go running sometimes with the weight vest and it, um, you feel it more on the uphill than the downhill. Um, but it's, uh, and I, you know, I, I'm kind of cautious. I don't want to use it all the time because I'm worried it might be hard on my joints. <laughs> But uh, it's good for elliptical because it's not so hard on your joints. And I, you know, I was wondering, like, would it even make a difference on the elliptical if I'm wearing a weight vest? Like, what, what does that matter? But, yeah, I really feel it. It definitely gets my heart rate up. I can't even do a normal elliptical, um, at least not the machine in my house, and have my heart rate get up high enough. It's like I can't get past, like, the 130s. Um, but if I, if I wear that weight vest, then I get up back into my target heart range. So that's kind of a, a nice way to adjust it. The, uh, you know, the key is to make it, Make it something you enjoy. So whatever kind of exercise you do, like find a way to make it enjoyable for you. And I, I could get pretty bored, you know, just running all the time. But almost every time I go running, I bring my iPhone and headphones and I, and I go um, uh, and listen to audiobooks. Sometimes music. I love Depeche Mode, so that's kind of great. I have like a, tr a track that I use for, or a, a playlist I use for running that's got all these like high energy songs. Uh, so sometimes I'll use that when I don't really feel like listening to an audiobook or um, or I'm kind of sluggish or I haven't exercised for a while and I want to get back into it. Like I've been traveling and I fell out of the habit and then I'm like want to pick it up again. I might use music those first few sessions because it gets me back into that into that mode of exercise. 
Uh, but most of the time I love listening to audiobooks. And then my exercise time becomes very efficient because now it's like my morning learning time. So every morning I'm stimulating my brain with new information. Uh, it's one of the reasons I have like so many articles to, uh, to write about because I just listen to hundreds of audiobooks. I probably go through, you know, in a typical week, maybe like one or two audiobooks a week. Um, maybe, maybe sometimes like three or four, depending on if I'm listening to it outside of running as well. So that's great for just like keeping up and consuming knowledge. Uh, another thing you can do is listen to podcasts. Um, I, I did that recently. I listened to like 94 podcasts on, uh, on creating membership sites because I was going to be creating a membership site. And that was really cool, you know, just to like get those done during the runs. And it's like every run, it's like just one podcast after another after another. Um, you can do cardio with uh, weight training. And what you do there is you just, you make it circuit training. So if you don't know what circuit training is, um, you can look it up, Google it or whatever. But basically it's like when you're doing um, rounds of weight training where you're doing like one set of one exercise and you move on to the next set, uh, another set on a, like a different machine or a different exercise, and then another set on a you know different type of exercise and maybe do like five or six of those in a row. And then you might take a break and then you reset and you start and go through that again, like a few rounds. Uh, and I've done some circuit training in the past, and it's pretty intense. I don't know if it's the best thing for actually building stronger muscles, but it gives you a hard, a hard cardio workout, um, and that's going to help you kick in some of the mental benefits. Whereas if you're just doing weight training and your heart rate goes up and then it goes back down, and goes up and goes back down, and goes up and goes back down, that's not going to be so beneficial for your brain. It's not going to like generate that pumping action that cleans everything out. It's not going to trigger all those, um, you know, rebalancing effects. At least not to the same degree. You may get some benefit out of it, but I think if you really want to max out your mental clarity and your focus and concentration, motivation, uh, confidence, uh, you definitely want to, you know, go for more um, sustained cardio. Interval training works well too, you know, especially if it's you're keeping up your heart rate most, most of the time. You don't want your heart rate to dip, dip down too low though, so um, not like the kind of heart rate pattern of weight training. Um, well, you know, I love running too because it's just, it's travel friendly. That's, that's a nice thing about it. Um, so, you know, the, I, I had a gym membership for many years and I canceled it because, and it was only like a 10 minute drive to the gym, but, um, you know, in Las Vegas, it's like ridiculously inexpensive for some gym memberships compared to like what I had in Los Angeles. Like I could renew my gym membership each year in Las Vegas for $97 a year. <laughs> and it was a beautiful two story modern gym with a swimming pool, indoor track, everything. Um, sauna even, and all kinds of modern equipment. And, and I realized I was actually spending more money on gasoline. I estimate I was probably spending about $500 a year on gasoline just driving back and forth from the gym than I was on the actual membership. So when I realized, you know, I'm just spending all this extra driving time and stuff, I canceled the gym membership and just set up a home gym that I use occasionally. Um, but most of the time, I just like the simplicity of going out for a run. It's, it's simple, it's easy, uh, not complicated. And it's travel friendly, so you know I'll do it more often. Um, you know, every once in a while I'll mix it up, do different kinds of workouts, like P90X. I've done that a couple times, or the Insanity workout. That's a really freaking tough one. Um, I've done that one once. So you know, but but those more complicated workouts, I just I just don't do them as regularly because it's like feels like too much of a burden or too complicated. Uh, and I can't I can't do other things. I can't listen to audiobooks while I'm doing those things because I have to follow the instructions along. So, uh, you know, or if I'm doing weight training, I have to concentrate a little bit more. It's hard to listen to the audiobooks at the same time. But with running, it's like it's so automatic. I could just tune out and get into the flow of whatever I'm listening to. What I would recommend for getting started is to do a 30-day trial of exercising every day. Like, you know, every single day, especially in the morning, if you can schedule it then, set some kind of standard for yourself. And if if you can't start with like 45 minutes, and I totally understand that because if you're out of shape and you're out of practice, uh, 45 minutes is daunting. <laughs> um, so start with whatever you can do. Start, start small. Even start with just a minute or two and do that and do what you can and then build up the next day and try to keep increasing it each day until you're up to like at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes is really a good minimum, but you're going to get more benefits, I think, if you go to 45. So try to get to you know, 45 if you can and build up, build up to that. So you can do that over a course of 30 days. And if, if you, um, you know, that, that helps get you, get you into the habit. And if, if you can do 45 minutes, then great, go for that, you know, or 
especially the 45 to 60 minute range is I think about ideal for the mental benefits to kick in at their max. Um, so do that, you know, every day for 30 days, if you can, it helps really helps you get into the habit and find an exercise you like. It may take some experimentation. Another thing you can do is if you really want to amp up your mental performance for the year, um, do a 365 day challenge. So your challenge is to exercise every day, no matter what, for 365 days. And I've done this twice. I remember I did it in 1997 and then I did it again sometime in the sometime in the range of like 2000 to 2010. I don't recall what the other year was, maybe 2007 or eight or something like that. Uh, but that's, you know, that's quite a whole new level of challenge. I remember like in 1997 when I did it, I was like sometimes sick and I was like out all day and I had to do it at 2 a.m. Two and in the rain and I still did it. And that's a great discipline builder if you take on that challenge of like exercising every day for 365 days, no exceptions, no matter what. I mean, maybe if you really feel it would be life-threatening, don't do it. But, um, you know, just having that as a reference ex reference experience, knowing you can do that, it's, it's pretty powerful. And I have to say, like, those years when I did that 365-day challenge, that was, like, you know, amazing mental clarity and sharpness um, and getting, you know, lots and lots of work done. So that's, you know, that's a whole other level to take it to if you want. Don't discount, you know, the, the benefits of cardio. Um, it's just, it's, it's so much more well-researched than other forms of exercise. Again, because like some of these studies initiate with mice and, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to study in humans too, because a lot of people, it, it's just an easier thing to measure. So it's not to say again that, you know, yoga, weight training, all kinds of other exercises don't have mental benefits. I'm sure they do to some degree, but, you know, in terms of the scientific literature, nothing beats cardio. So if you want to amp up your brain and just get all those benefits, uh, do it. <laughs> and it's, you know, there's going to be a part of your brain that's going to say, no, no, I don't want to do that. Um, and that's the dumb part. That's the part that's kicking in because your neurotransmitters and your hormones aren't balanced. And so there's, the, you know, it's kind of a catch-22. It's like you really have to exercise to get the benefits so you can be mentally strong enough to keep exercising. So it can definitely take a bit of push to get yourself going. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like the 30 day challenge because you just like cut out all the BS, no exceptions, and it's a good way to start. And you can always tell yourself, I can quit on day 31. So it's a limited range, you know, just like the 30 day challenge and moving with water fast. I can tell myself, um, hey, on thir day 31, I can gradually transition to eating again. But, um, you know, because I have that that deadline in mind is not infinite, it makes it seem easier. But if I'm doing well, I might even continue fasting a bit longer than 30 days if I get to that point. But I don't want to tell myself that now on day 19, I want to keep, you know, just get to that day 30 point first and then I'll reassess. So it's the same thing with exercise, you know, you just get to day 30 and then you can reassess. But after day 30, now you're a person who's had 30 days of success behind you and you're much more likely to keep up the habit. Uh, in fact, if you, you know, if you can keep up the habit long term, you'll probably get so into it that, you know, if you do it for several months, you'll get so into it that you'll always remember like how powerful it is and how much better you feel when you do regular exercise. And then even if you fall out of it for a while, get sluggish again, you'll remember that, that that's the thing you can do to boost up your metabolism, get access to all those benefits again. So it'll always be in your back of your mind reminding you to get back into it. Um, and you're just probably not going to feel as good if you don't. So, you know, you're a human being. You've got a brain that uses, again, 20% of your oxygen and resources. It needs your help. It needs you to, like, do your part to keep it sharp, to keep it strong. So, you know, get your ass out there and go exercise. <laughs> don't wait. Just do it today. Or if you're listening to this late, then do it tomorrow for sure. Okay? Don't, no excuses. No BS. Just do it. I'll see you tomorrow.